I'm Liz Becerra, St. Raphael's First Communion Coordinator at St. Raphael's Religious Formation. On behalf of our catechist, we welcome you as we begin our religion formation classes. It's been a challenge this year for all of us, but with our faith in God and our love to teach and share with your children about God and our Catholic faith, we are up for this year's virtue challenge. So welcome to an exciting experience as we explore our Catholic faith, learn about the life and teaching of Jesus, and celebrate the gospel every Sunday. This year, your child will explore in depth what it means to live as a disciple of Jesus and learn what it means to follow him by living as a member of the Catholic Church. Within the church community, we support one another in the following way of Jesus by living according to the Ten Commandments, the law of love, the Beatitudes, and the works of mercy. As the primary educator of your child in the Catholic faith, a God-given role, you are allowing us, the catechists, to assist you in supporting and participating in an active role by guiding your child's growth to build a wonderful and faithful relationship with God. So we ask you to join your child for Mass every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. through St. Raphael's Facebook. After Mass from 9.30 to 10.30, then we begin our classes from 10.30 to 12. Sunday Mass is an opportunity to set aside time to be centered on God. So we encourage the families to attend Mass together because you are a very important model. From Proverbs 22, 6, train a child in a way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Scripture teaches parents responsibility in the sight of God to teach the children about God and his laws. When parents neglect this responsibility, they pass nothing to their children, creating a godless generation. God is a loving source of everything that exists. So as a parent, reflect on the following. How can children pursue religion if parents don't initiate it and set the example? How can your children make a spiritual decision, embrace God and the Holy Eucharist if they never go to mass? So we welcome you this year. Please be patient with us this is going to be our first time actually doing the virtual classes and we will be patient with you. So welcome and God bless. A few words, uh, the same with Father Celino, uh, he is sending you uh, his blessing and I don't know if you notice, but I'm using his uh, Zoom account. <laughs> so um, uh, we, uh, he was uh, very gentle to buy uh, the Zoom education. Uh, all of, all of, most of the kids now, they are having classes uh, remotely at home. And all of us, we share that a very stressful situation and that frustration of having online classes. Uh, and I noticed because I have a lot of friends in the education field and, and the computers freeze. Uh, sometimes they have glitches and stuff. Uh, but we want to be able to overcome those situations. And that's one of the reasons that we decided to buy the Zoom education because uh, we want to make it so much easier for you. It's so many different platforms, but sometimes the other platforms uh -huh. work very well with uh, the computers and iPads and sort of stuff. So Zoom works with everything, and the class is going to be uh, through Zoom. So, uh, because of COVID um, and um, uh, having a, a meeting with the bishop and the priest and everything, uh, we're going to have the classes online. Uh, when you uh, register your kids, you have a, the choice to, to choose either hybrid or 100% online. But uh, according to the safety department and all this stuff, uh, at least this first semester, all the classes, they will be, uh, free, uh, it will be online. We won't be able to have face-to-face -face classes. Uh, we don't even know if, if this year we'll be able to do that. Due to uh, the demand that we have in a parish, we're a huge uh, church. Uh, there's some other 
uh, 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 parishes or other confirmation programs that they have like 30 kids total in their confirmation program. I have 30 kids in just one class. So definitely the Department of Safety and uh, the city, they won't allow us to have the 500 kids that I usually have in our program. So because of that, at the moment, the safety procedure is to have all the classes online for the safety of our families, for the safety of the catechists, for the safety of the whole community, we will continue the classes online. But if everything seems uh, good, uh, we have a plan uh, to safe to resume the classroom. How that's gonna work? Uh, a lot of you, I know that you have that question. Uh, one of the things that we learned with this pandemic is we plan, we plan, we plan, and everything changed from one day to the other. So sometimes it's a, it's a lot of frustration also for us because we plan so many things and everything changed. So it, it's not that we haven't planned, but uh, sometimes we don't want to release information because things are changing so rapidly. Like, uh, as you notice, uh, we usually have our live stream mass at nine when the diocese moves forward to the third uh, phase of the pandemic or to resume to the, to the masses, uh, that changed everything. So we have to adjust and that's very normal and that's gonna be a big common denominator this year. So let's talk about uh, this. Uh, uh, distance learning is gonna be very safe, 100% online. The classes are every other Sunday. That's how it works in a parish. One Sunday we have communion, another Sunday we have confirmation. So we will request uh, to connect at night 20. We will have a countdown as you saw in, in, in at the beginning. So you are able to log in and, and we will live stream the mass. Uh, we're hoping that the families gather together and celebrate mass together. And we will start classes. Uh, we will give them a break to the kids. It depends at what time uh, mass ended and we will give them a, a break. But uh, technical classes are from 10.30 to 12. So definitely be, uh, after mass we will have a bathroom a snack break for the kids. Uh, how is gonna work the hybrid classes? I know that a lot of you have these questions and technically we don't know. Uh, we will, we will uh, evaluate uh, in the second semester after the holidays. There is a lot of gatherings, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas. We know that there's gonna be a lot of gatherings, a lot of the families are gonna gather together and we will uh, have to evaluate based on how many people are in the hospital or hospitalized because of COVID. So based on that, we will be able to see if we move forward into the hybrid phase or we stay in online classes for everyone. So that's more or less how it's gonna work. But definitely the first is the second uh, step in a hybrid classes, it will be to resume to math, to mass. Uh, that's when is that gonna happen? When the El Paso Diocese move forward to the phase four, which is the 50% of the capacity is when we want to encourage the participation in mass. This is super important because right now in phase three, they only allow the 25%. 25% is only 250 persons in our, in our masses, in a regular church, right? Well, if our kids participate along with the families, there's no space. So what we're asking is to alternate. Uh, what I mean with this, uh, Right now, and I'm not right now, baby. I have to listen to this, okay? If you attend Sorry. class online, uh, you are receiving Christ, mm -hmm. uh, and you are not uh, singing if you don't go to mass. I will, I will repeat this. N no, because we are the mass. The, the church are open now. You have to go to mass, especially if you have a condition or you uh, have a family member uh, living out of your household that they have a condition. Uh, don't risk it. Don't go to mass yet. That's super important. Uh, when we were celebrating the um, uh, the first Holy Communions, uh, I noticed something, and that's when I came up with the idea of the video of the Don't Touch It, and that video has gone viral. I don't know how many millions of views we have uh, with that one, but it was a kid leaking the pew. So that's one of the things that we want to avoid definitely with um with the kids right sometimes the kids uh, uh certainly we are not aware of this situation sometimes they don't wear correctly the face mask etc etc so uh, it's an encouragement still to stay at home 
uh, continue with the social distancing and avoid uh, a lot of uh, places uh, like Walmart and now the people that are going to Walmart to chit chat. Um, then in a third phase, uh, we're gonna have a, a in-person classes. Uh, we're hoping that the catechist, if it's possible, we don't know at the moment, they will be go back to the classroom and we only allow 15 uh, students per classroom. Uh, we'll, Careful. That's gonna be definitely a challenge for, for all uh, staff here in the parish, right? Uh, and if that's gonna happen, one of the things that we wanna have, we have kind of like a three different aisles in the, in the parish. We have the annex and the 100 hall and the 200 hall. So we will have only three classes simultaneously. So we will have to have one class at nine, no another, hint. Class at no eight, hint. another class at 11. So the kids, they are not at the same time in the same building. So that will definitely will be a challenge, but we are a, uh, we're, we'll do whatever it needs in order to um, uh, accommodate the families. And, but we'll see how that works. Uh, let's talk about the virtual classes. The virtual classes, like I said, it's going to be through Zoom. Uh, we noticed that it's the easiest and, and the less complicated uh, platform that exists. Uh, so we will continue with it every other Sunday. And one Sunday we will have the class, the live stream class. And the other Sunday we will have a very a small homework. Like uh, for the communion tool, they already know that, oh yeah, they already did the first homework. Uh, me and Father Ivan um, assist me to do a, a video how to set up a, a prayer space. It was beautiful. A lot of the families, they send us their pictures and it was so beautiful. And we completed some of those pictures. Um, so that's definitely gonna be the first assignment. So it's gonna be very uh, uh, small uh, uh, homework that so they're gonna have to complete. What we want to encourage is the participation in mass. Uh, a big question, a lot of you were unable to pick up the, the books, so we're gonna have a second uh, pick up, um, first I pick up material. That's gonna be next Saturday uh, from 10 to 12. Uh, it's mainly for confirmation, but we will have another, another space for communion. Uh, super important, um, just in your window, uh, we need the name of the student. Probably at this, at this moment, you already uh, have a, a phone call, a text, or email from your teacher. So if it's possible and you already know who is the, the catechist, that will be very helpful. Uh, remember to always uh, wear your face mask and uh, Senor Villanueva, uh, he did perfect. Uh, we know that he was in communion, the, the name of the kids and the teacher. So uh, hopefully uh, by the second week, all, all of you, you already know who is the catechist and, and and the communion classes that they are. They are in communion one, communion two, uh, pre-confirmation, etc. Remember that we have a lot of classes uh, and sometimes it's difficult for me when they say, when I ask, uh, Kana is the first question that I ask, the name of the student and the name of the catechist. And a lot of you, that's something that you need to learn, the name of the catechist. A lot of you, you say, is, is this the, there's a couple. Like, we have like five couples in the teaching. Es este una señora grande. Like, that doesn't help. So please, uh, if it's possible, uh, learn the name of the catechist of your kids. Uh, like I said, the, the, the live stream is now on uh, And we ask you to continue the mass etiquette. Not because you are at home, you can watch mass in your bed or while you are at breakfast. Uh, what we recommend is the same etiquette like you were at the church, uh, just follow those ideas. And this is some of the things that we recommend uh, how to participate during Mass at home. And let's talk about uh, a little bit about the virtual classes. Uh, super important since the classes are going to be virtual, we, we must have the medical form. This is from the diocese, uh, that's why when you register, uh, sometimes it seems like a duplication, right? Why did I fill it out? Uh, the registration form, why I have to fill it out this form. This is from the diocese, uh, and this waiver, it must be signed, especially in the social media release. Uh, uh, at the end, uh, in the comments, sharing some of the uh, files, very important files that you're gonna have to download. One is gonna be the ca calendar of the year, 
which is not approved, but at least you're gonna have a calendar uh, to base on. And the social media release. If you fill it out, but you didn't sign in this part, uh, what we're asking is, again, fill it out the second part, take a picture and send it to our email, okay? But they must uh, sign uh, the social media release because the classes are through Zoom. So if they haven't signed this part, they won't be able to participate in the, in the classes. Uh, we're gonna be using class uh, last year we use uh, Thank you. Google Classrooms. Yeah. And we noticed a lot of problems. Thank you. One, it, this is very funny because they have little monitos, the little monsters, so the kids they can identify. Another problem that we have with Google classes is uh, we use the email of the, of the parents. So sometimes it was complicated to know what is the name of a kid because some, some of the emails are like a star 54 but we really know what is the name of the kid. So in order to avoid that confusion for the catechists and for the families, uh, we're gonna be using ClassToYou as well. Uh, we're gonna be sending you uh, how to log in. We're gonna start adding the kids into the ClassToYou, and it's a perfect way of communication, plus uh, we're gonna be posting the homeworks and the assignments right there. Uh, so the ClassToYou is very simple to use. Uh, you're gonna have the code, just enter the code, and sign in, and a lot of you, of you are already have class dojo because the school of your kids. So I would say that the kids are experts at this moment with the class dojo. So that's very very helpful. And so it, it looks like this. So you're gonna have to open. Uh, I highly recommend if the kids they have iPads, iPods, or phones, uh, download the app. It's very simple to use, and you can uh, just Google and uh, YouTube uh, how to use, uh, how to log in a class audio. And it's really, really fun and I love it, to be honest. Uh, I work in education. I was a teacher for many years in, in a public school, in private school, in Catholic school. I was a principal in several schools as well. And definitely these platforms they are a blessing for all the teachers out there. And I'm pretty sure that some of you are teachers as well. And definitely those tools are a blessing for all of us. So hopefully that will help us to get uh, more organized. Uh, uh, we have a mass etiquette. We have a virtual mass etiquette. But we also have a Zoom etiquette. And I want to share a couple of stuff with you guys. Uh, uh, the first day of class, this is more or less what the catechists they're going to be addressing with the kids. And from there, uh, we're going to continue with the classes. So we ask you to be on time. Uh, act like you were in the school. Yeah, a lot of the kids, or, or some of the parents asked me, some of the kids, they have the, 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 the uh, yellow polo shirts. That's optional. If they wanted to use it in order to feel like in the classes and have an ambience, uh, we definitely we support that. Uh, instead of uh, the polo shirt this year, because one of the main concerns, uh, my concerns is the, is the safety of the kids. So one of the things that I noticed when I took over, when I started uh, assisting here in the parish, is some of the kids, while they are in the classroom and they walk to the church, some of them, they start running around, and sometimes it was complicated in mass identify our kids. So that's why I come up with the idea of the polo shirt, or something to distinguish our kids, and especially for safety reasons. But now they are at home. Uh, we don't see that need uh, of the polo shirt, what one of the things that definitely we want is and we buy we bought a bunch of uh, a face masks with the logo of the parish unfortunately they weren't able to have it on time uh, because we use the diocese and it's a win-win because they're going to make a, a fun or they did a fundraise with that and we were able to get some um, face masks as well to support a diocese and instead of the polo shirt that's what we want to provide uh, this year uh, we asked uh, the families to help us out uh, to get in a, their kids sitting in just one place, uh, get yeah. yourself muted, and the camera's on. That's super important. So that's, that's going to be the, the rule for the year. Uh, video on, Microsoft, mics off. Cameras on, mic off. And obviously... Cameras on, mic off, okay? So next, next week, we're going to have to start in, school. Like in the school Catechism. and super so gonna, They're going to do mass at 9.30, so we have to be ready uh, to do mass, uh, like uh, if we're going to church. 
That's so we'll right. get ready. We'll we'll do mass till ten thirty, and then when from ten thirty to twelve, we do. Uh, I highly recommend you don't have a beverage also close to the kids. Uh, on, so online. An accident, and they can. Yeah, have so they just want you to be on time. And have uh, act like you're in school. This class is once to out. place. I know that a lot uh, of keep your out. Keep yourself muted and leave the video on. Jesse and Chondo, may you please you whoever mute you. your mic. Yeah, we can all hear you and we can't class. hear you. Guillermo, we couldn't hear anything you were saying the last couple of minutes. No, there was a man talking to his child. Mr. Dahonat, uh, everybody, if you can please look at the bottom left of your corner. Make sure you're muted. Many of us are muted already, but there's um, about five or six that are not, not muted. You can please mute yourself and Mr. Tahonat can continue. Uh, thank you, Danny. And that is one of our uh, catechists, and uh, they, they did the Bible camp, and definitely they have a lot of a lot of experience uh, doing the, the the virtual classes. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this. Okay, uh, super important. Uh, no PJs. If well, we're not asking for the um, polo shirt. Uh, at least help us out. No PJs allowed during the classes, right? Uh, uh, we highly recommend to find a quiet place, uh, free of distractions, TV, the family members, toys, pets, etc. This is super important. It's wow, a whole lot of time. I know that a lot of you is a challenge per se, uh, the online classes, uh, but um, uh, we highly recommend to find a special place for your kids. Even aside from the space that they have during the week for the online classes, that will help out to set up the, the, the time for religion classes, right? Remember that we are asking for a prayer space as well. So this is more or less what we recommend uh, to stay on task and, and concentrated and don't mean anything that the speakers say. Say, 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 say. Okay? Super important to have the material ready. So that's why one of the reasons that we give them, continue giving them the, the back with all the stuff. So the kids, they don't have to, to stand up and get other stuff. So we highly recommend uh, in their uh, back that we provide to have the name of the kid and also the name of the teacher. Uh, that will help for you and the kid to learn the name of the catechist. Uh, we have a video. I, I won't be able to show, oh, I don't want to show you the video. This is more for the kids. But uh, we have a video how to behave during uh, the online classes. But the catechists, they will be able to share this, this video with your kids. And basically, it's, it's what I said, right? And obviously, Asia appropriate. Super important, text message. And um, this is my personal cell phone. And I have another cell phone uh, that I'm using in my virtual office. So I don't answer uh, the phone. Uh, I, I try to just to answer from nine to five, uh, text me and, and you know the phone, uh, it's out there and I'm trying to make myself available. But if you call after hours, I won't, I won't answer. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being really good answering all your phone calls and stuff. But this is super important uh, families, if you can do it right now, text to 8101010. Uh, this is only for First timers, communion one, first year, uh, and this is the code. Also, you're gonna have a different code for the class dojo, and that's really nice because in the class dojo, uh, that create also a group chat, and the catechists they will be able to chit chat with you, but only with that class. This is for the entire first year of uh, communion. And I already started receiving some people that they start joining. Excellent. Thank you so much. And like I said, um, we're recording this uh, meeting, so we want to able to post this on YouTube. If you have a um, question on the on the code or something, you will be able to go back. Okay, let's let's move on for the communion too. Mr. Tahonado. Yes, sir. You have a question. They're asking if they already have Class Dojo and the Remind app from last year, will they need to add it again? Yes, uh, I'm going to go and tackle about that. So if I move forward in the presentation, I will be answering that question. 
uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. B. Uh, for the communion too, they already have this, but there was a few of you that they weren't uh, joined to our uh, reminder. So please, uh, some of you already have it and they're really good and we're, we have been posting a lot of stuff and a lot of messages to remind. Uh, unfortunately, not all of the parents registered the kids for this year. So some of them, they decided to drop. So it's okay. Uh, so that's why we post again this. For the class of you, and this is for continued information. And the same is, the number is 81010. And here is the code. And this is only for continued information. Remember, continued information is the non-sacramental program. And we have third grade all the way to eighth grade. If you have more kids, if you want to enroll them, uh, we highly recommend. Uh, for Just for that class, we have like nine different catechists. The kids, they're going to be together, and it's very fun. It's very mobile. It's totally different than communion, and, and the kids love it. Uh, we highly recommend. Uh, we encourage the family to enroll the other kids that they might already have the communion, but we don't have that huge gap sometimes uh, between communion and confirmation is a huge gap. Well, the continued formation is the answer. So the kids, they continue learning about God. Uh, so let, let's talk a little bit about the different guidelines of the... <laughs> Oops. Um, the primary educators uh, are definitely the parents, right? We, we join efforts in order to educate the kids in their faith, to transmit that faith. And sometimes it's the grandma, the abuelita, to help us out, especially in this moment. But this is very, very important for all of us, and especially in this time of the pandemic, to help us out, to help us out to the kids to learn their prayers. And remember, this is super important, and this is in the Vatican II, uh, that say uh, the Pope, the primary educators of the kids are the parents. Nothing substitute that. So we need to work together and join forces to continue that beautiful um, uh, pathway of the faith of the kids. Uh, remember this, uh, more than three absence and the kids, it will be dropped. Although the class is gonna be through soon, we'll continue with this. Uh, if there's an uh, excessive amount of um, absence, we will drop the kid from the classrooms. Uh, like I said, the live stream mass is at 9.30, so we will try uh, to continue with the live stream mass. Uh, and right after the mass, we will have our classes. Have all your material together. And that's one of the reasons that we came out with the back. We had to recommend have all the material uh, in the bags. The other Sunday, the catechists, they want to post uh, the material needed for the next class. So some of the times you will see some message from the catechist saying, uh, the kids in the next session, they will need scissors, Play-Doh, et cetera, et cetera. So try have that ready for the kids uh, so they are able to work uh, different activities with the, with the uh, catechist. Usually we have those materials here in the parish, but now it's complicated uh, to distribute those material. So if we send you a, mes a previous mes message with uh, the material needed for that session, please help us out uh, to have that ready for your kids. And we we definitely we need your participation. Uh, uh, this is totally out of the ordinary. And probably some of you are already stressing out with your kids uh, during daily classes at home, right? But definitely we need your, your help uh, with the electronic devices, especially for the little ones, first grade, second grade, sometimes they need assistance to log in and to make sure that the kids are in the Zoom classes. Uh, to have the material ready and especially to help us out to keep the kids on task, right? That's definitely some of the things that we really need assistance, right? Mr. Tafanar, do you have another question? Yes. Uh, the question is, um, the Spanish class, do they see mass at 9.30 as well? No, the Spanish class, the bilingual class, as a matter of fact, they, we're going to have exactly the same meeting right after this one. And it's the, I won't be able to stay uh, and longer because I need to participate in the 130 mass. So that ma that other meeting is going to be really, really fast. 
and uh, we're, we're trying to participate the class the bilingual classes and this is important because a lot of a lot of you don't know that we have those bilingual and Spanish classes in that class that we're going to be participating in one city mass so usually when they register here physically with us we ask that question at what mass do you participate do you participate in the Spanish mass we highly recommend the bilingual classes uh, the book is bilingual the categories are bilingual uh, but they have that Mexican feeling as well and as they usually the catechists are trained, whatever the kid talk is how we reply. So the kid has a question in English, we reply in English. And uh, they will be participating in 130, the 130 mass. The classes start in the uh, bilingual class or the Spanish class at 11, from 11 to 1. Then we have a break because it's lunchtime. So we notice that some of the kids, because they are hungry, so we have a, a, a moment right there, and then we participate in 130, 130 mass. But the Zoom, the Zoom meeting will continue. So technically, the, the mass will be retransmitted in the, in the Zoom. Thank you, Mr. B. Uh, some of the prayers that the kids they need to memorize, and that's some of the things that uh, we ask your uh, assistants, little by little, to uh, do the prayers with your kids. And especially in the prayer space, we highly recommend every day uh, go to your designated uh, altar and do the prayers with, with your kids in the morning or in the night. If that's very desirable to keep practicing with your kids the prayers. Uh, every year we have a Eucharist retreat and the reconciliation retreat. Last year, uh, finishing the last year, we were able to have the reconciliation retreat online and I think it was a success. So we're pretending, we're hoping that this retreat is gonna be here at the church. If not, we'll have it online and that's gonna be announced. Uh, we don't have a date because usually in this retreat, we the retreat is for the parents as, as well for the kids. We separate the parents and the kids and we have a beautiful retreat for all of us, all the families. But it will be more information about that. And it's, that's only for the confirmation too. Uh, parents and sponsor meetings. Um, technically, there's uh, no, what we suggest is the uh, godfather to continue participating in the process of the play with their kids. Um, and we will have a few more uh, meetings and uh, I'm gonna be assisting some of the, some of the catechists in the technological part. And there's a few kids and some of the confirmation kids that they need their, um, uh, service hours, they're going to be assisting another catechist uh, in, in the Zoom classes, especially in the, in the techie part. But I want to try to have one Zoom for uh, the office. So whenever you need to chat with me or have a question, uh, you will be able to log in during uh, uh, time of the classes, and you can ask that question in that other room. Uh, I will, I will make uh, that available for you guys. So if you have any question, you definitely can talk to, to me. Uh, we have a, a parish app we highly recommend to download so you can have uh, all the information in the, tip of your, in the tip of your fingers, right? Uh, so I, I always um, notice that the catechist fight with electronics. Now there's no other option. We need to embrace it and we need to go all the way and we highly recommend to download this app. You will find prayers, you will find the mass schedule. It's beautiful, just download, you will find message. And Father Celino is really good to send in a message to the whole community. Super important, please, 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 uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Facebook, you can friend us on Facebook. Uh, we are trying to post the most important, we post the mass, we post the most important information, uh, we're using that uh, platform as official. A way to distribute the, the, the information. So if you have any question, I'm the administrator also of the Facebook, as well, Father Celino. Uh, so he will be able, if you have any question, any concern, or you want to complain about me, you can do it right there. <laughs> uh, that's a website. We have a website aside from the parish because I try to update that website very often. Uh, and I need to say this as well. Um, this office is run by a mini army of volunteers and some of my uh, uh, some of the catechists 
eh, en el lado volunteers, like Danny Bejarano, the whole Bejarano family, make this possible. Now, with all this situation, and we cannot have the volunteers in here, it's so complicated for me because it's one man against the world. And, and more than never, we feel the presence of our volunteers that make this office to bright and shine. So we thank all the volunteers, all the catechists that make this, uh, this program possible. It's, it's not me, it's the, all the volunteers, and we feel that. So I try to do my best, but sometimes it's complicated, especially this time that we don't have all the, our staff available. Uh, we highly recommend to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. We're posting a lot of stuff like this video. It will be posted right there as well. Uh, and we have a bunch of other things like we have adult Bible classes. We have some videos for the kids. Uh, some of the catechists, when they have a really good teaching, we uh, uh, record them and we will broadcast that uh, without the kids. Uh, we want to have uh, the section Que Padre Tan Padre, where I'm going to be in interviewing some priests. Etc. Etc. So please, it's very desirable to continue uh, subscribing to our channel. We would like to have some uh, live stream events. In order to do that, we need to have a, a 1K. Uh, I, it seems like a lot, but it's possible. Yes, Mr. B. Couple of questions. Yes, sir. Sorry. Um, on the uh, access code for Dojo for second year, can you, can you give that out one more time just to make sure we have the correct one? Yes, sir. Um, in, in the comments, I'm going to send three different files. One is the calendar, two is the virtuous presentation, and three is all the class dojo. There's just one class dojo that I won't be able to share in this Carmen Ledesma because Carmen Ledesma, she set up her account last year for class dojo. She okay, second, qu second question is if they haven't been assigned a teacher yet, how can they find out who the teacher is? And that's going to be with me. <laughs> but at this moment, I think all the kids that have been assigned. And, and yesterday, we reassigned some of the kids. I just spoke with the parents, and we, we got into agreement uh, to place some of the kids. For instance, we have a kid that he was uh, in seventh grade, first communion. So we place in the pre-confirmation sacrament class. But definitely that is discussed with the parents. So um, unfortunately, I cannot stay because we need to start with the, with the Spanish class. Just uh, text me or give me a call, or the best way is to email me so I'm able to reply to you uh, with those questions. But at this moment, uh, all the kids, they should be assigned. Obviously, there are some kids that are registering at the moment. Uh, I received two phone calls very early in the morning, and I noticed that people that were registering last night around midnight. So we want to still have registration to the 20th. And on the 27th, we're going to ha have a curbside uh, registration. So we will continue with registration, which usually we don't do this. We have a cutoff deadline, and that's it. But this time, because the pandemic, we will be uh, able to extend those dates. OK, let me read. <laughs> uh, super important, the diocese have implemented a Protect God's uh, Children program. It's called Virtus. All the catechists, there's no one single catechist that they have been going to the fingerprints and all the stuff. They do the back and check and we ensure that all our catechists, they have no records, right? This is super important. All the 18 and all the catechists that participate, they do back and checks. And one of the beautiful things about Virtus, because even in the schools, uh, if you apply, it, it works exactly like the school. You do your back and check, they do the fingerprints, they charge you $20, whatever. But they only do it once. The Virtus, since it's in the computer, is constantly doing the back and checks. So we continue checking our catechists and our staff to ensure the safety of our kids. So we have three trainings. One training for the kids, very mild, very appropriate. And this year is all about uh, uh, social media. Uh, we want to have a small training for the parents. And as well, the catechists, they need to go to a training, a three hours training uh, in order to be a volunteer in the parish. That's for everyone. And it's very complicated because I'm also in charge of that. And the catechists and all the personnel that volunteer in the church, they every year they need to do an online renewal. If you want to participate, if you want to be a volunteer, definitely uh, contact us. We have a few parents that they are involved in the teaching of the classes in a lot of those parents, that's, that, that's the first 
push to become a catechist. So if that's in your heart and you want to volunteer and assist in one of the classes, definitely contact us and we will help you to do these trainings as well. Okay, now I'm going to answer some questions and, and especially I'm going to move uh, to the uh, uh, virtual training. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to try to answer some questions and then we want to move forward to the to the uh, virtual training. So this is not the end, okay guys? So this is our virtual training as well. Uh, there's a video that I'm going to make available and, and we have, like I said, a, a training for the kids as well. Uh, that training is very mild. It's not like, like this one that you are watching, but some other things that you need to learn. And I always recommend, and especially a little bit older kids, uh, some, some of the families, when I say, if you have a Facebook, join us on Facebook. I don't have a Facebook. I don't have any social media. But some things the kids do. So my recommendation, if you are under care of kids and the kids are in social media, you must have an account in order to track who are the friends. And technically, we, we try to explain to, this to the kids with the boundaries, like don't touch me and I have my bubble. So definitely that's some of the things that we're going to tackle this year with the kids. Uh, Cyberbullying and boundaries in the computer. This is so important uh, because sometimes the kids uh, or the families, they don't know, and they activate the GPS on their phones. And maybe another person can see uh, where is the location of that person or that phone. Uh, I don't know if you know, but in, in Snapchat, you can see where your friends at. Because if you activate that option, you can see the, the GPS, the locator. So that could be a dangerous if they don't know the person. So technically, what we are, we should teach our kids is if they don't know physically that person, they shouldn't be friends of someone, right? The same happened in the computer. If they don't know that person, why are they going to be uh, friending a lot of people just right, right and left? right and uh, another thing that we highly recommend and we want to be teaching the kids is uh, one of the things that we suggest and we want to be suggesting to the catechist is your camera facing the wall so we don't know or we don't see what is going on in your household uh, because uh, from previous experience uh, we just need the kids in the class right Technology today presents unique challenges for parents and children. The benefits of the internet far outweigh the risks, but those increasing risks need to be taken seriously. Online communications could be an avenue for vulnerability for abuse, cyberbullying, exposure to inappropriate material, and unsafe people. It's important to keep up with the technology children have access to and know the risks and safety features of each device. Oversee their online presence. Take possession of their phones and computers at bedtime. Talk with them about the kinds of situations that could arise and remind them of grooming behaviors to help them recognize potentially risky adults. Adults need to be aware that internet technology is often mobile and can be accessed on different devices. Monitor them all. They also need to know the risks and capabilities of each device, game, or app and to establish limits and boundaries for technology usage and proper access, along with installing and using filtering and monitoring software. It's important to be aware of the safety features on each device and then review and modify the account settings or updates. Cyberbullying has become a real problem among young people. The use of technology to humiliate, threaten, tease, manipulate, and harass is a growing concern. It's also important for youth to know that nothing is private on the internet and not everyone online is who they seem. They should think twice before posting and check with a safe adult before meeting or doing anything with an online friend. Young people also need to know that they have a responsibility to stop, block, and report cyberbullying. Stop and don't respond, forward, or encourage the threat. Block that person or account and save the evidence and tell a trusted adult as soon as possible. If necessary, report to the web or app administrator or even the police. The following are conversation starters to have with youth about technology safety. Ask, how do you choose your online friends? Are you selective about who has access to your life that's revealed on the internet? What does personal or identifying information mean to you? What do you share about yourself in posts or images? Show me your account security settings. What can others see? Will you show me how to create and use my own account? 
Do you feel safe when using this app? Do you know of anyone who's experiencing threats online? And what are some ways to respond if you or your friends begin to feel uncomfortable? These are all positive ways to have healthy conversations with youth to address the technology gap. If an individual exhibits a warning sign, it doesn't necessarily mean that he or she is an abuser. They could have poor boundaries and be unaware of the rules or inappropriate behavior. Regardless, the behavior must be addressed. Behavior that doesn't cause a suspicion of abuse, but that is still concerning, must be addressed with the supervisor. Communicating concerns is not accusing anyone. There is a distinction between communicating about risky behavior versus reporting an actual suspicion of abuse. When behavior isn't abusive, but does raise concerns based on the policy or code of conduct, you can call attention to the inappropriateness of the action by fraternally communicating directly with the individual and then relaying that conversation to a supervisor. Or, you could simply speak directly with the supervisor regarding the concern. However, if at any point you have a suspicion of abuse based on the behavior of the child or the adult, then you would need to report to the appropriate child protection authorities in your state. The number can be found through a quick internet search or via a phone directory. All states have laws that require reporting child abuse. Please refer to your state's requirements for specifics. If you are concerned a child is in imminent danger, call 911. You can impact how you and others behave with young people and how children deal with confusing, uncomfortable, or scary situations. The conversations you have with children and young people about the issues addressed in this program have the potential to impact generations to come. As a result of implementing the items here, children become less susceptible. And the opportunity for abuse is less attractive to people who want to harm them. Thank you for all that you do as a protector of young people. Right. So, I don't know if you have any question on this. Uh, basically, that's what it is, uh, the technology and the virtual boundaries. And one of the most important things for us is, one, avoiding any kind of cyberbullying. That's totally forbidden, and we will address it very seriously in our classes uh, and avoiding those situations with the kids. Uh, and also, the safety of the kids has top priority. If that was our priority number one here in the church physically, now, our uh, efforts are to minimize all the problems uh, on, on, on the computer. So because of that, we want to be changing very often the, the passwords. So there's only the kids logging in into that, yeah, that account. Right now, as you see, everybody was, was able to log in into this uh, uh, Zoom. But later on, uh, one of the things that we want is we want to be changing the different codes so, and we will send you the different codes. So only you and only that class that will be able to log into that class. We invest a lot of money in order to have a very safety year. That's priority top number one. And we have a test right there and all of you passed. I will make myself, uh, I will also email you this PowerPoint so you can have that and, and you can see it. And and, and stuff.